Hello and welcome. I'm Brian Bradford and this is the Healthy Approach Podcast. Today I'm here with Dr. Jason Dixon from Dixon Chiropractic and Wellness Center in Fort Worth, Texas. He's a certified applied kinesiologist and has multiple certifications in network spinal care through the Epienergenics Foundation. Our topic today is about how the mind and body are connected, especially when it comes to stress. So welcome, Dr. Dixon. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me out here. Well, we need to talk about how the mind and body are connected and what stress does to us. That's what I really want to start off with. It's just understanding that component of stress because we all identify stress differently, whether it's an emotional stress, a physical stress, lifestyle, dietary. I mean, there's so many things that can cause us stress these days, right? So how do you think stress is affecting our ability to live a healthy life? So stress is... Uh, first off, I'd like to back up and just say not all stress is bad. It, it gets a bad rap. That's right. It's a it's a challenge to the system. And in many cases, it's the challenges that we need to be able to grow and thrive from. Uh, it's really about how we adapt to the stress. That's so right. as you mentioned, there's mental stress, emotional stress, chemical stress, physical stress. Um, if somebody is injured in an accident or something to that nature, that's a physical stress, but how the body responds and how the body heals is going to depend on their overall level of health and what other methods that their body is adapting to stress with. So when we look at the stress response, the uh, survival response, where a lot of people think of, it's this fight or flight, get us out of danger, help us to survive. It's so necessary and it's awesome. It's, it's a powerful response. It should only last a couple of hours. You know, you get this should. shot of adrenaline or, or, you know, cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine that are charging your system to be more powerful, to escape danger, to survive. And thank God for that. Uh, people are able to accomplish amazing feats, lifting a car to save people's lives. Um, you know, so we need it. And, right. and I don't want anyone to think, well, you have to eliminate stress. That's right. But we need to be able to manage it. We need to be able to identify when we are responding in, in a way that's survival versus thriving. That fight or flight. Exactly. So there are definitely certain postures that go along with certain levels of stress, certain emotional states. Uh, you've probably been able to see people who are kind of down on their luck yes. or, or maybe someone's exuberant and they're just on top of the world or they're about to fight someone. You can read that and there's a good reason because in their body, exactly. It's body language. The, um, the body responds to the life experience and there's a posture, there's an emotional tone of the muscles, the way the body and the spine anchor into that fight or flight response can become a pattern of the way we hold ourselves and the way that we, we live. So the way that we see the world when we're in stress is different than the way that we see the world when we're relaxed and at ease. Would you agree? I totally agree. Uh, yes. So when you are stressed, Everything is in a state of hypervigilance. Like you are, you're excitable. Your muscles are pretensed. Everything is ready to go. Your blood shunts away from your, your vital organs that are, you know, digesting and taking in nourishment. The blood shunts away from the frontal cortex, the front part of the brain where we actually have our logic and reasoning. And it shunts more towards what we call the lizard brain, the survival brain. And we get to a point where we can't even really rationalize what's going on. We just have to get through it and survive it, which is fine if you're running from a tiger yeah, or if right. you're you know, trying to avoid a, an accident quickly. But there's so much in our societal way of living that, that our culture is embedded in constant stress. And, and that's what we live every day. I mean, everybody yeah. seems to be in this constant state of go, go, go stress, that fight or flight in a sense. Exactly. So to talk about the body-mind connection, uh, there's probably times where you, you've had a pending conversation, probably an uncomfortable conversation. You, you run over it and over it and over it in your head, and you've argued with somebody several times before you ever even talk to them, and you generate the same emotional response and the same physiological response as if the argument's actually happening. Are you talking about my wife and I already? Well, you know, I, don't, I haven't <laughs> met your wife. <laughs> no. No, so... so um, an anticipated job interview. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I drove here from West Fort Worth. There were plenty of opportunities to excite that fight or flight response. So That's right. uh, it's a Even matter doing of today's podcast. Yeah, doing, oh my God, <laughs> this is exciting though. So it's, uh, but if I, if I have my mindset in a different way, it could be terrifying. That's right. But it's the same kind of energy. 
It's the, the energy of the body. The emotional response is the body's way of communicating to the brain, hey, this is what's going on in life. And if the brain has to check out into a survival mode, that energy of the emotional signaling in the emotional neural transmitters become trapped up in the body. Uh, the work of Dr. Candace Pert, I don't know if you're familiar with her, uh, for the name. Molecules yes. of Emotion, is just an incredible concept where uh, these emotional and, and stress-related molecules are trapped into the tissues, into the, the part of the nervous system that's anchoring into that fight or flight response. And when we have body work, when we start to get into a place of peace and ease and some, some deep tissue massage sometimes or other types of work, a lot of forms of chiropractic care, we have what's called a cathartic response. Okay. Where the, what does that, that mean? That emotional energy or that those molecules of emotion are released back into the system. And now when the body's not in a stressed, um, blocked out state where it's having just to survive and it can, it can receive that input, we start to feel it. Mm -hmm. We start to actually feel the stress that we've been holding on to. Posture has a huge implication in that. Um, the, the tension and tone of the spine is putting a certain amount of tension and tone on the neural tissues. It's uh, really presetting our responses to be either more in fight or flight or more at rest and, and ease. Mm -hmm. And uh, many forms of body care, uh, meditation, breath work can help to shift those things. That's right. So, for example, if your head is down, your shoulders are rolled forward, that's that's more of a defensive type of posture. Do that for just a moment and try and take a deep, life-affirming breath. You really can't. It's you a can't challenge. Get a deep breath. Yeah. Yes. And so if you hold your head up, bring your shoulders back, and then take a deep, life-affirming breath. It's a big difference. You get a much fuller breath. You start to feel more energy movement if you're, if you're uh, sensitive to energy. The... Uh, the breath work that we can do can really shift our whole state of mind and shift our whole state of being. And then the body responds to that state of mind. Uh, there were some studies that uh, I want to say it was Greg Braden. I was, I was going through some of his work and he was saying uh, there were studies where people with multiple personality disorders uh, had different blood chemistry when the other personality was active. And even Very different eye prescription uh, for their glasses when they had a different personality shift. And it's like, well, that right there just shows us how connected those two things are. That's right. So I'm a chiropractor. I'm a body worker. Uh, and I, this is what you're teaching people at your practice, too, is the, is the breathing and, and meditation and all that's the a, That's techniques. a big component of it. Yeah. And uh, the kind of care I provide, uh, you mentioned network spinal care developed by Dr. Donald Epstein over the last... 35, 40 years now. He's uh, the founder of FB Energetics. Uh, it's a brilliant type of work. I, I'd say he's really a genius of our time. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an analysis of those stress patterns of the spine, finding where the body is chronically holding those, those inefficient patterns, stuff that helped you survive, you don't need to hold on to all the time. That's right. And with very delicate, precise, and specific input. We, we are uh, stimulating neuroreceptors in the skin, in the muscle tissues, helping to cue the nervous system to reconnect to the body so that that trapped and bound energy, the bound tension, the amount of energy it takes the body just to hold a muscle and guard and spasm can actually be liberated and used for growth and healing. And so a lot of people are told they hold their stress in their shoulders or maybe their lower back, but it's really so much more than that about it how stress is. is impacting their whole body. It is, absolutely. Uh, and, and depending on how you are in, in your life, if you're more uh, externally driven, you're more uh, of an extrovert, you're probably going to hold stuff that's uncomfortable closer within. Mm -hmm. And I've found that um, people who are more introverted tend to push the stuff they can't be comfortable with out, further out. And so Interesting. It's, I can almost guess where they're at in their orientation when they come in with either a back problem or a knee problem. And I'm finding that, you know, they may have muscle tension in their calf that resonates, has the same kind of vibrational energy tone as these places that we work with in the spine. And it, and it's, it's a, a calling back of the energy of our, of our life experiences. So you talk about the healer within, you know, t tell me where can we start to connect with that? So connecting with the healer within, starts with body awareness, okay. starts with being present, being in the now. Uh, there's a lot of books out there about it that, that you can easily get your hands on and it'll guide you to some, some ways of training the mind to do that. 
we, we do that in the practice, teaching people to be more present. Can you give me a couple of tips of what that looks like? So when you are thinking about something and you're feeling depressed or anxious, I can tell you right then, you're probably not in, in the moment. You're either looking in the past or in the future. To be fully conscious and present, the easiest way is to focus on your breath, to focus right now how your body moves as you breathe, feeling the movement of air through your your airways, feeling the expansion of your chest, feeling how it stretches your clothing, feeling temperatures and textures, being aware of your feet on the ground, being aware of your your, um, your pressure on the seat or if you're lying on a bed, feeling your entire body, just being so aware, or even while you're walking, being aware of every movement of every muscle. If you start to focus on those kinds of things, you can't help but be more present. That makes sense. I, so really being in tune with all that physical type or breathing even exactly. is very important to the body. That's why my wife always says, get your shoulders back. Because you know, yeah. I'm always slouching sometimes. Yeah, sit up <laughs> some, straight. Some great advice. Every it time is. I walk into a, a networking event or something and I, I introduce myself as a chiropractor, I see half the room check their posture. <laughs> so we're, we're aware of it. We know That's it. That's right. And we, we go into those habitual states. Um, so with body awareness, we're finding that people are becoming more aware of their posture, more aware of how their body moves, how they're holding tension, how they need to move to release tension. And it's, it's a matter of listening mm-hmm. to the body, mm-hmm. listening to, am I actually hungry or am I thirsty? That's right. Am I feeling stressed right now? Is my breath fast and short? I can change that just by stopping and slowing down, taking five deep breaths. So that's what you would tell someone to do first step. Yeah. Just stop. Be aware and start taking some slow, deep breaths. Whatever you're feeling, instead of trying to trap it into a story and explain it away, Mm -hmm. because that's what holds on to it for us. And we can repeat that story and repeat those emotions again and again and again. Or we could stop for a moment and just really truly feel what it is that we're experiencing in life and think of where Mm -hmm. do I feel this? Mm -hmm. I feel this here. There's a lot of associations in the acupuncture system with certain emotions and certain meridians, and there's a good reason for it. There's like certain organ systems, certain placements of energy that emotions resonate with. Liver and anger, gallbladder and resentment, um, upper cervical spine and, and tension about time. There's lots of correlations that we draw together. And, so and Chinese medicine's big in that too as well. That. That's right. Yeah which is very cool. I've always been fascinated by the different emotions connected to different organs and you're just showing proof that it's out there. And even more correlations looking, looking into the work of uh, Carolyn Miss. She's a medical intuitive. I haven't heard of her. Uh, Energy Anatomy is okay. one of her big things or Anatomy of the Spirit is the book version of that. Interesting. A uh, brilliant blend of understandings from uh, Christian, Judaic and Ayurvedic traditions Uh, And speaking of Ayurveda, I work with the Dr. Jade Martinez from Green Door Holistics, and he's been sharing perspective or um, the uh, perspective of this ancient healing art. And I'm seeing how it meshes beautifully with the Chinese or uh, Japanese Reiki, Chinese acupuncture, Mm -hmm. uh, what we're studying in the the neurological relations with uh, chiropractic care. It's, It's just amazing how it really all comes together. That's right. So what sort of changes are you seeing with people once they start this breathing exercises, being aware of their posture? What, what, what changes do, can they expect to occur? So a lot of people come to me initially because they're having some symptoms or pain. Uh, some people hear that this care is good for a lot of other things, helping to adapt to stress and, and those kinds of things. Um, people don't often expect to start sleeping better, digesting better. Um, just moving better in general. And when you're more in tune with your body, you may actually initially hurt more. And that's that's taking people outside of the comfort zone that they're looking to get into. Right. So body awareness is not always about being comfortable. It's about being real. Mm-hmm. It's about being uh, fully connected. And I'm finding that people are showing up more confident. Their dialogue changes. Even if they're still experiencing pain, their their relationship to that changes. Uh, and I've had people who are starting to really align with their purpose. And I see that because they start to challenge the belief systems that they were limiting themselves mm-hmm. with. Challenging family belief systems, challenging have. culture. Yeah. Uh, instead of trying to force themselves into a box that they don't really fit in, they start to create a new box. Wow. Or just walk around outside of the box. Very interesting. And uh, I've had people come in and say, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to creating more community. 
And, and what we're seeing in, in network spinal care is that as the spine is more at ease and there's an opening of the heart center that's starting to direct and guide movements of the spine, it's pretty amazing uh, the, the phenomena that happens with that. It's almost poetic that we see people actually live more led by their heart as well. Mm -hmm. More wow. community driven, just more loving. And so I'm seeing that on a daily basis in the that's, practice. That's just a whole new level, especially with chiropractics. Because, you know, most people are kind of scared of certain chiropractors because of the twisting and popping that goes on. So when someone comes into your office, what are you taking them through? Give me an idea of what that looks like. Sure, sure. So um, I often like to, to see what has your experience been with chiropractic? And, and very, very often I'm people's first chiropractor. And I said, well, just so you know, I do things differently than a lot of other chiropractors. In fact, I'm the only one in Fort Worth who practices network spinal care at this time. Uh, several docs in Dallas and a few in Austin and Houston. That's it for Texas, but then spread around the world that this care is, is growing and growing. Uh, so I tell people we operate in a different paradigm. Your body is holding tension and it's causing you discomfort. And there's some pain that you're, you're feeling that you want to get rid of. I get that. And we're going to get to that. Um, what I'm going to do, or what I do for people is to help analyze the stress that their body's holding. And instead of finding where their body is locked into defense and actually trying to stabilize itself by having those restrictions, I'm helping it to find where it's at peace and ease. So we analyze their posture, do, doing some digital photos against a posture grid, doing a dual weight balance to see how they're distributing their weight. That's right. I have people with a 10 pound imbalance to the right side or left side, wow. and, and they're not even aware of it. They're just that checked out of their own body. Mm -hmm. um, uh, seeing how they balance on one leg and then having them close their eyes and see how they balance on one leg. You get to see a lot of old ankle injuries surface with that. <laughs> uh, you also uh, get to, to have a lot of insight with uh, using thermographic and EMG technology. So a uh, thermal scanner is measuring the heat uh, signaling off the body using some infrared sensors. I use the uh, CLA Insight brand. Uh, it was technology developed by NASA scientists that became used widely in, in chiropractic. It is useful at seeing the amount of stress that the autonomic system is under. And then the EMG or electromyography is measuring skin conductance letting me see how the muscles are firing to see how the, the body is coordinating muscle activity to hold people upright against gravity. And it also shows where there's some chronic tension in the, in the emotional motor system. And I use that throughout their care so we can monitor how those patterns are changing. Because I don't just want someone to get into a normal bracket and put them back in a box of this is normal. Mm -hmm. I want to see that their system is dynamic That's and that right. it's changing. So when they encounter stress in life again, because they will, they're going to respond differently. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And then um, by palpating their spine, finding exactly how their body's responding to certain uh, protocol cues with this work that I do, uh, it helps them to connect to that stress and their spine becomes more at ease. There's a, a wave of spinal movement that occurs with their breath. And later we build tension and energy and help them to really direct some, some amazing changes. Wow, well, that's amazing. This work, so. That's amazing. And now, as far as the popping and twisting, um, that is associated with a chiropractic adjustment very often. It's not mm -hmm. required. And the, the fear behind it is that, well, you know, it might hurt. Um, some of those quick, abrupt movements are creating a stretch in the joint capsule, which allows the gas from the joint fluid to temporarily escape and, and create that sound. It's a cavitation. It's, it's very safe. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a good reason that chiropractors' malpractice insurance is so inexpensive. <laughs> Because <laughs> what we do is incredibly safe. Mm -hmm. The uh, different techniques that are out there are just, just so varied. Um, there is. I, that's why we, we. What's the best chiropractor to go to? We don't. We're so confused the best about one that. that. Fits for you. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. a great. I'm way not the best answer. chiropractor for everyone. I, I've been a great one for for quite a few, and uh, I'm always happy to refer to other chiropractors when I feel that they're a better fit. Yeah. Uh, there's different but, approaches. But you're one of the first ones I've come along with understanding the mind-body connection, you know, as far as really seeing how the breathing and your posture and emotions and all that affects your whole body. Because not everybody just sometimes just focuses on the body and hopes that it corrects the other things. But you're you're hitting both sides of the picture, and I really like that about you. It's, I, I couldn't do it any other way. Yeah. Um, when I was 14, I started sensing energy and started studying uh, everything I can get my hands on about metaphysics and the, the energy systems and Chinese medicine, Japanese medicine. It was, it was just a, a passion from 18 on. And what led to that? I mean, at such a young age to really get into health like that. So well, what do you think was your stepping stone there? You know, I think some some 
times you're just led. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you just mm -hmm. have to follow your heart. I, right. I believe if you do follow your heart, you're going to find you may not be where you were supposed to be. And so I, basically you were just in tune with yourself I was, from the beginning. I was <laughs> I, even more so now. When I look back, I was really stubborn uh, and I, I just had a natural instinct for it, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I started mm -hmm. sensing energy, learning how to move it, how to connect with other people, had an intention of healing and had some pretty cool things happen when I was a kid with my friends. Fevers reduced, you know, just different sure. things. Uh, and it's not anything special about me. It's just tuning into that natural healer within mm -hmm. and connecting to that life force that drives us all. That's right. Um, so finding early on some teachers that led me to uh, studying natural healing, which led to chiropractic. And then within chiropractic, I found network spinal care. That was exactly what I was looking for, a, a type of work to really not just shift health, but shift consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that, that's huge. I mean, the consciousness part of it is so important nowadays. We're, we're understanding, I mean, everybody's hearing about the, the gut and brain connection now. So, I mean, with all the research that's just piling out there right now, we got to got to look bigger you know, into the body as far as the whole body's principles, not just focus on small parts of it. Exactly. And so that's changing. Do you use nutrition in your practice? I do. I, I use some. I, I often refer people to the Sunflower Shop because <laughs> my office is five minutes away from the Camp Bowie location. The worst store, yeah. So uh, I love what you guys have. It's a, it's a lot easier for me to use your inventory than stock it myself. So sure. <laughs> uh, I do carry a handful of standard process products. I've, I've been a huge fan yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, their whole food system, uh, the, the way that they... Um, formulate their products to really target specific glandular and uh, ligaments and, and just overall body health. It's just incredible. But aside from them, there's a multitude of brands. That's right. uh, I do find that most people are dehydrated and malnourished mm -hmm. when they're coming in with chronic pain, chronic inflammation. They need some nutritional support. Um, I'll often have people starting with some, something simple like taking, you know, adding turmeric to their diet, uh, making sure they're getting enough vitamin D, making sure they're having a good B vitamin balance. Uh, it's very crucial for neural function. Mm -hmm. uh, inositol is a good one for radiculopathies and er nerve mm -hmm. damage and pain from that. The uh, Just the need for magnesium. That's in right. Diet is so huge. And so... Uh, if I may ask, why, why do you find the importance of the B vitamins in the nervous system? I'm always trying to explain this better to people. Sure, sure. You know? Now... Um, Tapping into my biochemistry knowledge is dangerous because, <laughs> I, honestly, I, that's not my expertise. Sure, no, I understand. I, I, we studied it enough, and I, I kind of own the concepts of it. I know that's essential. And, that's right. And I can definitely point to the information for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but B vitamins are crucial in nerve function. That's right. uh, and that's why when we have a, a deficiency in B12 and B9 or folic acid, you know, mm -hmm. there are uh, neurodevelopmental issues when we have right. a lot of unexplained or um, are just really hard to pin down neurological problems, that's one of my favorite places to go to. It's like, well, where totally are agree. you using B vitamins? Especially if they're following a vegan or vegetarian diet, mm -hmm. they're not necessarily getting the full B profiles that they need to be supplementing. That's right. Things. And it's really more than just B12 for most people. Yes. You need all those other yes. Bs for transporting those nutrients to where they need to go. So it, it makes a huge impact on the nervous system. And especially since that's what you really focus on, I think that's definitely a, a foundation for most people out there. It's at least get the B complex and magnesium and some of your minerals and right. Water, we, like Lots you said, water. water is probably the biggest issue I see with clients too. And some of them say, I drink tons of water. How can I be dehydrated? Well, they don't understand what inflammation does for them or what, you know, how important minerals and vegetables are to make sure that water is getting into the cells properly. So there's a lot of, you know, key nutrients that is a great foundation for adding on to what you do. And I think it's so important that nutrition and chiropractic and mind and body connection and all that just merges together. together. It's, it is. It's so important. It's, it's great information. What's some of your favorite books out there? Well, I, I could start with some of my favorite authors. And okay, let's start with that. Any list of their books. Sure. Uh, anything really by Wayne Dyer. Uh -huh. Greg I Braden. love Wayne Dyer, yes. Uh, Greg Braden's another favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. He's a, He really brings uh, spirituality and, and science together in such an awesome way. That's right. And Bruce Lipton, his mm -hmm. whole discovery of epigenetics. And amazing. His work is just incredible. Uh, Carolyn Miss, as I had mentioned. Uh, Dr. Eric Pearl's book, The Reconnection Healing, uh, was, was a, a big starter for me. Um and then anything from uh, 
Neil Donald Walsh has been inspiring, uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. Yeah. Uh, so when we start to put all these things together, uh, Deepak Chopra, another yeah. of my favorites, and, and Don lepstein has got a couple of really great books, 12 Stages of Healing is a go-to for my uh, practice members to guide them through that healing process. And That's right. I give a copy of the book to every everyone that comes in my office. Um, so those authors have um, just a wealth of knowledge and, and it's going to take a while to read through it. But if you start on that journey, there. you can start to put some of these pieces together, too. And so that's what I've done. And I've seen there's no way to separate mind, body, spirit. You could try. You can focus on one and you can get results in the other. But when you take into consideration the whole picture, a holistic view, the mm -hmm. results are a lot faster, more sustainable and um, you can have a lot more fun in life, too. I totally agree. Yeah. Give me quick two or three tips that someone should start doing right now that you think would benefit most of the population. Absolutely. The biggest cause of stress that we see is job dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. If somebody's getting up to go drive in traffic, to go to a job that they hate, to afford things that they don't need, to pay for a house that's bigger than they need, to maintain a lifestyle that they've been sold that they should have, I, which I call that whole thing, the rat race. Mm -hmm. So we can get out of the rat race and focus on the things that really drive us in our hearts and really follow our hearts. Then we will be a lot happier and a lot less stressed. Now, if you're stuck in a pile of debt, and really that's a huge stressor sure. for a lot of people. I highly encourage people to look into the Total Money Makeover or Financial Peace University, mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey's mm -hmm. work. That's been a huge Great game changer program. for me. Um, <laughs> stress about money and low back pain just go hand in hand. That's right. Uh, stop. Take a breath. Put your hand on your body. You have one of those. Put both hands on your body. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, and just connect. Move your hands over a few different places. Uh, the 12 Stages of the Healing book goes into some great exercises to, to bring these things together. If you get to a place and it feels like it's harder to breathe and you're just so disconnected and you're like, I have no energy here or there's no movement, no breath here, don't hang out there. Mm -hmm. Go with what works. Go find a place connecting with yourself that just really seems to light you up, that you can take a deeper breath and then take a few good connecting breaths there. Bring it to the place that's a little more challenged. Get one breath and get the heck out. Mm -hmm. Start mm -hmm. to, to help your body find its own natural rhythms and connect to that strength that you do have. Focus on your strengths. Focus on the things in life that bring you joy. And we're headed right into a season that is big, big stressor for a lot of people when they feel and like they have to buy it's a season about giving too, day. but you're right. We stress about it. it well, it's, a, it's a season about giving and about thanks. Mm -hmm. And we take it too far. Mm -hmm. Have to give, have to give, have to give. It's never a have to. That's My right. wife and I have said, this holiday season, we don't want any gifts except for the time that we can spend with you mm -hmm. to be present with our family, to be present with our friends, not to have presence from them. Yeah, I like that advice, Dr. Dixon, just be present. That's what we can all use more of. Dr. Dixon, I hear you got a special offer too. I do. So anybody who's tuned into this podcast, I, I would love to connect with you. I'd love to help you with your journey. And anybody who would like to come in to see me, mention this podcast and I'll give you 50% off your initial visit. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Dixon. Thank you for having me. How can people find you? So my website is Dixon Chiropractic Wellness Center.com. It's a mouthful. Uh, or DCW.center. We're on Facebook. We're on Eventbrite. We have community events that we're doing, talks and meditations every week. Uh, Dixon Chiropractic Wellness Center.com has connections to my whole holistic team that we've put together. And uh, you'll find all sorts of cool things that we're, we're really about to launch uh, in the coming year as well. well. I'm excited. Well, thanks so much again. That's going to do it for this episode of the Healthy Approach Podcast. As a thank you for listening to this podcast, go to sunflowershop.com and use the code Dixon to get free shipping on your next online purchases. This will be good until the end of the year 2019. Please subscribe if you like this podcast and help us spread the word by rating and sharing with your friends and family. If you'd like to learn more about what you can do to improve your mind-body connection, go to sunflowershop.com, that shop with two P's and an E, or visit us at one of our three locations in the DFW area. 